Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. If Nona doesn't smile more, I'm going to turn this car around and go back home right now. Today we're talking about lies our parents told us. If you're not watching, you should watch because Nona's face will, will tell you everything. So Nona, you presented this um, topic how do you want to how do you want to jump into it? What you got? Oh, you're not going to do the whole like, subscribe, follow, blah blah blah. You're doing it right now. Good job. That's what you normally do. I was waiting for you to do that first, and then I was going to jump right in. Well, now you did it. So okay, we're good. all right. So, anyway, do what she said. Yeah, do what I said. Do what she said. No matter what platform you're on. And I think we already talked about this, but on uh, Spotify, you can leave comments. Now, I don't know if that means if you're listening on another platform, that you can. I don't know if you can do that. I don't, is there like a comment section on Apple Podcasts? I have no idea. So, comment on Spotify if you want. Okay. But comment on YouTube for sure. Andrew will make sure to respond to you. Yeah. If you do, comment. Um, and we've got some guests that we're recording with today, but we'll talk about that later. Okay. All right. So let's jump right in. Lies our parents told us. And also the ones that we continue to perpetuate to our own children. I've never lied. Everything I tell the kids is the truth. <laughs> Do you remember any specific lies that your parents would tell you? Um, those are those things where if I saw it in like a movie or TV show or if something happened. Okay. Let me Kanye you for a minute. And I'm totally stealing that from you. Um, he has said many times that he just does not remember his childhood. He, it's just all a blur to him or a blank slate, as, if you will. But no, he has just, like a couple key memories, but that's about it. So I remember things as they come up. <laughs> as you were saying, if you were watching a movie, maybe that would trigger yeah. a memory of, oh, yeah, my parents would do that too. Okay. Okay. So you really... The kids were uh, arguing this morning, actually, about throwing food away. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Chloe said there's kids starving on the other side of the world. And I was like, no, there's kids starving like Everywhere. down the road. Right. <laughs> but that's definitely one of the lies, and it's actually on my list. It's not a lie, though. It's, it's true. It's one of the lies that my parents would tell me of, you need to clean your plate, and if you don't, a kid in Africa is going to die. Okay. Like, what a morbid sentiment if you're a child and then it's perpetuating this horrible food cycle of I'm eating everything on my plate so that I keep a child alive. Yeah. I mean, if you really, really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it and talk about like supply and demand and things like that, when you're taking more than you're really going to consume, mm -hmm. you're taking away from potential supply the only people that you're really helping, but also the only people that you're really helping are the farmers the government okay but it, you're not helping let, let's talk about the child who's not actually hungry okay. and now you're sitting there forcing them to eat and i'm not saying that every situation is like this but it could lead to other negative things of you're you're overriding their stomach and brain natural sure. like <laughs> sure but there's also the truth that the kids are all old enough and deceitful enough that they want you to forget that they didn't eat everything on their plate but they definitely have room I was for dessert. sent to bed if i didn't eat everything on my plate um, it was a punishment that, that only happened for us when it was like absolutely just refusing to eat anything and throwing a fit and, you know, leaving all your broccoli on your plate, not touching it. We used to just have to sit at the table until we were done. That mm -hmm. was, yeah. So you can eat all your pizza and you can eat all your French fries, but if you don't eat all your asparagus, then you're not getting up from the table. I have several food ones. Um, I guess we'll just continue on the food. Um, I was told that broccoli makes you smarter that carrots make you see better, that potato skins make your hair grow and your skin glow. So the carrot thing isn't 
all wrong. Mm-hmm. It's just presented incorrectly. Okay. It doesn't make you see better. It slows the decay of your vision. Okay. So you're just just like from the moment that you're born, you're you're working your way till death. You're just Joy. you're just prolonging your the benefits of your existing vision. You're not regaining something that you don't have. You're just not losing it as fast. But most people supplement their diet anyways with vitamins and other um, like protein shakes and st- stuff like that or protein amino acids, things like that that contain a lot of those same um, substances mm-hmm. that do the same thing. Okay. That's not to say that you should 100% supplement your shit diet with supplements. Right. But having having a supplement is the equivalent to like just covering your bases. You know that you're going to eat That's pretty much everything that you need. Literally in the name, supplement. Yeah, yeah. It's to supplement yeah. what you are already consuming. Yeah. So your your daily vitamin or whatever that you take mm-hmm. should get you the majority of right. your daily nutritional need from very specific nutrients. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't cover 100% of it. Right. You should be getting it from other sources. And it's also the way that you metabolize things. And there's a lot of science that goes into this. Like when you're taking just a, a couple of pills and, and drinking water, right. you're going to metabolize it too fast. You're not actually going to retain most of it. You're just going to shit it right out or piss it right out. So So, speaking of science, were you ever told the, we'll say, story of the child who ate the watermelon with the seeds and a whole watermelon grew inside of their stomach? So don't eat the watermelon seeds. We always imagined, or maybe I'm the only one that imagined this, but... I always imagine like Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah, like it was gonna no, totally grow out of your mouth. So you were you were told the same story or the same? No, but I know people who were, and mm-hmm. I was like, your stomach is made of acid. <laughs> but when you're four years old, you don't know that your stomach is made of acid. Of course, I did. <sighs> okay, not everybody is as smart as Andrew. I was I was addicted to um. Uh, the Discovery Channel, and there was a couple other ones that um, they did like How Stuff's Made or How It's Made or something like that was the name okay. of the show. At four years old? Yeah. Okay. I didn't have the Discovery Channel, so I, that I wasn't even I'm an not, option. I'm not 100% saying that it was Discovery. I know that there were other, so you like, I, and I don't know the order. So Science Channel, I think, came out a lot more recently. Okay. Like when we were probably maybe middle school age and stuff. Uh, but I grew up without cable, so I don't know. This was stuff that we also watched in school. I didn't. You guys never watched like how, I don't know. I can't think of a good example now. National Geographic was the, kids, the only thing that we The kids have said that they've school. watched it. Okay. I have not. Hmm. So. So anyways. What was next? The, that was it on the, your science knowledge? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, were you, were just, you told a similar story regarding gum? Of it takes seven years for your I gum. It was two or something like I that. I was told seven. And I actually don't think that that was my parents. I believe that was like my teachers. Yeah, I feel like it, totally same. So I was never offered gum as a child. So it didn't come from my parents. I feel like it was a teacher, and then it continued with other classmates. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the exact scenario for how it happened. It was teacher would see somebody chewing and then spit it out. Don't swallow. No, 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 no. no. It wasn't even spit it out. Don't swallow it. It was, they didn't want to get in trouble or caught. So they swallowed it instead of spitting it out and admitting guilt. Right. And that's when it was told. Right. Like it was the, it was the threat of you can get in a little bit of trouble or you can have your bowels backed up for the rest of your life. Uh, wasn't told that was, it was literally said, it takes your stomach seven years to break down gum. Like, what a what a random number. Because seven is a really big number when you're seven years old. I still, because there are things like that that 
and there's things with video games, things that cultural things that have happened across the world Mm -hmm. that everybody experienced, but just slightly different, not even slightly different, like pre internet before people were connected. Right. And there were things that people would say or, or things like this that would happen Mm -hmm. and somebody in Japan or it's like the game of telephone, but they would experience the same thing. Like who the fuck started it? Right. Who started it? Because you suck. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of starting, who started Santa? And why is that a lie that we continue to tell our children? Santa, Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy. And I understand, obviously, the magic behind. And the magic is well, what I've tried to perpetuate. No, it's for... for but, the, but the lie of as soon as you stop believing the gifts will stop as well. No. Again, it's like Here, a punishment. Here's what it is. It's the majority of the parents don't actually like giving credit to somebody else for their hard work and their money that they've spent. However, if you have your your group of parents that your kids all go to school together and one kid still really, really believes, the other parents are forced to not tell their kid because now you ruined it for my kid. Mm. You guys are all guilt-tripped together and none of you actually even want to participate. Nobody, nobody actually wants to participate in the Easter bunny, the tooth fairy, anything. So I think it's actually our own parents who are continuing it because I feel like when they were our parents, they were in that similar situation. But now as grandparents, it's the magic of being grandparents and being that special but it, once again, it boils down to if 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 the grandparent doesn't want to be the one that spoils it, of course they're going to play along. Mm-hmm. Because but, I, but I think they almost want to play along longer to keep the child a child longer because they know how fast everybody grows up because they witnessed it themselves when we were children and kind mm-hmm. of have that nostalgia and continuing to perpetuate the the magic, but it, it could be magic in other ways of magic of being grandparents. That's just my own personal take. My mom never liked Christmas because to her, Christmas meant spending money on gifts that nobody needed. And now she's... <laughs> All about Christmas, which is not the woman that I grew up with. And so it's just an interesting 180 in who somebody has turned into. And well, my family, it was always a clusterfuck, anyways, because because your birthday is on Christmas Eve. My dad's is the 28th, mine is Christmas Eve. Uh, my cousin's the 23rd. I have another cousin that's like the 19th, I believe. Wow. And these are my mom's siblings' kids. Oh, so okay. they were in that area. They grew up in the same area. Gotcha. So we're all so it wasn't like my family that was here mm-hmm. that you didn't have to see them, so you just sent them a card. Right, right, right. Not that that happened all the time, but I know that we we went through periods of time where um and like everybody's done this and everybody gets the idea from each other where everybody has to buy a gift for everybody. And then it's, Oh, um, how about one family buys for one family? And, and, and then it was one person buys for one person, okay. you know, like one cousin would buy for one cousin. You didn't buy for all the cousins mm-hmm. that, and then it devolved to nobody buys anything except grandma. Cause <laughs> Like I said, grandma yeah. continuing the tradition. Well, my grandma, I think you were there for that conversation. Maybe, maybe not. Um, she was talking about how one of my cousins was mad at her because she hadn't called her in a, a period of time or something like that, which of course also meant that my cousin didn't call her. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Andrew doesn't ever call me and he still comes over and has dinner once in a while and still love him. You know, like, you have not gone to her house for dinner the entire time that we've been together. So when was the last time you went to yeah, her yeah. house for dinner? We, we all went over there together. When was the last time you went over there for dinner? 
Um, the only time that I've been there was Christmas one morning. Yeah. That's not dinner. Okay. Well, we ate there. You ate there. Yes. We. Well, okay. Yeah. You didn't, but <laughs> everyone else that was there ate. Five of us ate. The six didn't. And I don't think my grandma even knew your, what you ate at that time anyways. My, I mean, my, my grandma is the majority of what she made or prepared or as she likes to say, she made it to the store. Mm-hmm. If you ask her. Did or you make, make a reservation. Yeah. You ask her, did you make this? She's like, yeah, I made it to, I made it to Publix or I made it to Harris Teeter. <laughs> um, the majority of it was, um, what's Smithfield's. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, which I'm a vegetarian. Which, no, but it's funny because I think I've only gone there one time since I've lived here and I've been here for eight, over eight years. Right. So that's what I'm saying is what are you, what is she talking about? You go over for dinner. She was just saying to my cousin, or like we keep in touch. Like there's no, there's no, oh, if grandma doesn't call me in two and a half months, I'm never talking to her again. Okay. It's just, Time has passed. I'm still family. She knows you're alive because yeah. you post every day on social media. Yeah. So that's the way that she knows yeah. that you're alive. Whereas your other cousin I think she's, had gone off of social media. And so no, the only form not, of... Not these two that I'm talking about. That, that was part of the conversation. That was part of the conversation. I was there for the conversation. So the only mode of communication oh, was continuing... That was, that was Nevada. Right. I'm not talking about I wasn't going to say her name. Why? It just <laughs> people's private, whatever. Anyways, let's get back to the topics. Okay. So the number one lie that I was told, and I'm sure you were told this as well, it's illegal to drive with the lights on in the car. Were you was, told that? No. Ah, what? I, I thought was, literally every child was no, told that. I was told to turn it off because they couldn't see. Okay, well, I would I would be in other friends' cars and their parents would say the exact same thing as well. And it wasn't like all of our parents got together, oh, we're going to tell. No. I really genuinely believe that nine out of ten children were told <laughs> that it was illegal to drive with the lights on only to get to 16, 17 years old, only to find... It's definitely not illegal. It's just not fun to do. <laughs> now you're going to Google it? I'm just seeing if it ever was anywhere. Uh, so it's generally never been illegal. But safety concerns, you could be pulled over. Misunderstanding of the laws. Some laws regarding vehicle lights. Lighting can be complex, contain, or leading to confusion. What is and isn't allowed. Leading to Parental confusion. caution is number three. Parents might have used this rule, they put it in quotes, as a way to discourage children from fiddling with the car lights and potentially causing distractions while driving. Okay. Yeah, it says that the myth persists for these reasons. So if, if your light was on and you were like in between lanes or looked like you were swerving or something like that, it gives an officer pre-cell phone reason to believe that you're distracted possibly so again they took a partial potential truth and applied it to everything okay they didn't want to be seen reaching back and smacking you because with the lights on people can see that if the lights off they can't was that a normal thing for you getting smacked while your mom was driving not while my mom was driving, while my dad was driving. Oh, okay. I, my dad drove everywhere is what I'm saying. Like then, and cause we got spanked with belts and stuff like that. So ripped the belt off while driving, handed to mom. That was the threat. Holy fuck. But then it would, before anything happened, they would pull over and they would just do it outside the car. Oh my God. My best friend growing up, his parents had a paddle. And at one point, they actually drilled holes in it to make it fly faster and hit them harder. Yeah, we've already had this conversation. Yeah. And here? that, yeah, oh. my ex-husband was passed down his paddle called Mr. Paddle. And that was the very first thing that I threw away of his. 
it was not coming into my home with my children. That was not <laughs> what I was going to be. That's not my parenting style. It obviously didn't I will work not, on him. I will not be spanking my children in any regard, hand or paddle. Hmm. Um, anyways, <laughs> a little lighter note. Um, when the ice cream truck's music is playing, that means that they're closed and going home. No. No? <laughs> uh. But we lived... <laughs> so, I mean, you've been to my neighborhood, my childhood neighborhood. Um, the street that our cul-de-sac was off of was a big loop. Yeah. And so you had the main road and then this big, basically be like a... The Man, letter, I was told all of the lot. <laughs> be like the letter D, <laughs> essentially. Yeah. And so there's all these offshoot cul-de-sacs yeah. from it. They Nobody ever pulled into the cul-de-sacs. Mm. They just drove slow enough that anybody in the cul-de-sac could come out like to the corner. or the There road. was always ice cream trucks in our neighborhood yeah, in the summer. Yeah, but I'm saying they never, they didn't come into the cul-de-sac. Mm. So... All the kids that were outside playing would hear it right. from far and run. Yeah. They would go and find it, cut it off. They'd have <laughs> one friend go and stop them while they ran and got money got from money. mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. But we always had, our house was the, like, mom went to Sam's Club because Costco wasn't there at the time. Mm -hmm. Um bought like the giant boxes of popsicles and everything. We had a big okay, deep so freezer. So you were out. that house? Yeah. And that was always the house that I wanted to have when I grew up. Because we had... Because I didn't have that We house. had the pool, the hot tub. We had all the cool stuff. Yeah. So now do you understand why I am the way that I am? No. Because all because of that, you grew up with that, all of and that, I did not. All and of I that always led to us and our friends destroying things and costing our parents money. Wanted to have that house. I want to be the house that the children invite their friends over to. Because I would rather be under my roof with whatever shenanigans they're doing. Or they could be across the street destroying somebody else's property. <laughs> My so goodness. The, when I asked, why is this taking so long to load? When I asked Gemini, um, I said, what are the most common lies parents tell their kids? Uh, I said, most of the, some of the most common lies parents tell their kids include, these are all short quips, but then it gives a reason for each one. Okay. The first one is, we'll see. This, <laughs> this is often used to postpone a decision or avoid saying no directly to a request. I've said that to Cooper and Cooper goes, that means no, right? Yeah. And I said, no, we'll see. We'll talk about it. Um, we're almost there. Oh yeah. I've had to do that a few times. Eight hours in the car is just a smidge too long for children. Well, now they all have their own GPS that they can. When we were going to CVS the other night to get stuff for uh, bandage stuff for Chloe since it was the only place still open at 9.30. Mm -hmm. I told you. There's, it was it the one by the hospital that's like the only 24-hour no, one? No, The one at the extension. It was still open? Yeah, it was open until 11. Oh, I'm shocked. The one, the ones in Leland close at, I think, 9 on Saturday. Sure. <laughs> so, obviously, I know where I'm going. I know exactly where it is. I don't even have to turn to get there. And, and she I, had her GPS. I look on. over and she's holding her phone. She's like, "You're gonna, you're gonna." Need to go. I'm like, "I, no, I know where it is." <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. That's funny. Uh, the next one, I'm fine. Parents. Oh, that's literally my go-to phrase. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Except the way that you say it tells everyone that it's not true. So it doesn't work. If you don't play the game, there's no game to be played. No, if you're going to say I'm fine, you have to sell it. I'm not selling any bullshit. Then you don't say I'm fine because you're not fine. That's lying. Don't lie. Um, I ate all your vegetables when I was a kid. What? That's how it's actually. <laughs> I ate all your vegetables when I was a kid. Gemini came into your home as a child. <laughs> 
but it says, this is used to encourage healthy eating habits. So I'm assuming it's I ate all of my vegetables mm-hmm. or I ate all the same vegetables. Probably. I guess. Yeah. Um, if you keep making that face, it'll get stuck that way. Oh, yeah. I was told that as well. I have a particularly nasty smirk. We used to, I knew people that would intentionally try and like smile intentionally because they believed it. They thought if they actually just held a smile, they would develop a better smile. So oh, wow. there were both extremes. People that were mad and sad, and they're being told don't do that because you'll get stuck that way. Gosh. Um, then the other additional ones, mm-hmm. Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, and Tooth Fairy. These figures are part of childhood magic and create fun traditions. Um, the next one is where babies come from. Parents <laughs> may simplify the explanation the or use stork. metaphors. That was like the biggest lie. Um. Their own past behavior. Parents may downplay their own past mistakes Mm -hmm. to set a good example. I could see that as well. Were you ever told that mom had eyes in the back of her head and could see everything? Mm, Both parents. Both parents? Yeah. I've never said that to the children, but the children all say mom has super power eyesight. Nobody was like, no, it's literally right in front of you. You have boy eyesight. (laughs) <laughs> Nobody was afraid of mom. Everyone was afraid of mom telling dad. Okay, gotcha. So that was the fix your shit now mm-hmm. before dad gets home. My mom was always the primary parent. So I asked it for some funny ones. The ice cream trunk only plays music when it's out of ice cream is the first one that comes That's up. That's funny. This cleverly discourages kids from begging for treats when they hear the familiar tune. Um, if you swatter a watermelon seed, watermelon will grow in your tummy. Uh, the car won't start until everyone is buckled in. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mom would say that one too. I didn't even think to add that one to the list. If you leave, if you leave your teeth under the pillow, the tooth fairy will take them and leave you money. That's just the tooth that fairy. That is the tooth fairy. <laughs> um, your nose will gr- grow if you lie, just like Pinocchio. Yes, I was told that too. Eating the crust of your bread will make your hair curly. Yes, I was told that too. Oh my God, I completely forgot about that. I had no idea. Is that something girls wanted? Was curlier hair? No. So having curly hair is... Hold on. So... Is bad. It's unkempt. People were dis- yes. ter- discouraging? Yes. We were told to eat the crust. I guess it depends on... Yeah, no. Uh, having straight hair, this like says, I did today. This says this might result in a child eagerly devouring crusts in hopes of achieving luscious curls. Interesting. No, it was said to discourage, but it wasn't. It wasn't my parents who said anything about the crust. This was children at school saying you're only supposed to eat the inside, which I'd never heard that before. Hmm. This, not not the one I'm about to read, but the last one is one that I can make work. Um, no, if you, I'm scared. If you cross your eyes, they'll get stuck that way. Oh, yeah. thousand percent was told that. And then the last and one. And then look, I do it all the time. And can <laughs> move my eyes. Okay, chameleon. <laughs> um, so I would like prove my mom wrong <laughs> by sitting there crossing my eyes. The last one. The TV only works when it's raining. No, I was never told that one. Can make that work. I was never told that one. Can make that work for sure. <laughs> can set up can set up something either with an Arduino and a rain sensor or use like if this and that or some sort of custom <sighs> command to disable internet to specific devices when the weather shows that it's blah, raining. Blah, 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 enable blah, it when it's blah. raining, but disable it when but it's not. But speaking of raining, were you ever told that if you shower during a thunderstorm, you will get struck by lightning and die? No, but... I was, and I still think about that as a grown-ass adult. I don't know. I can I can see how that could potentially work. Hmm. What about if you pee in the pool, it'll change colors? You know that there were places that originally, like public pools had actually put Really? A, yeah. Um, it would, They. it wasn't how you think of it, like where it'd be like yellow or green. Or it like a, in a grown-ups when it was like, blue. I feel like it was really, really dark blue. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> they were all laying there and peeing yeah, and it was it, just floating. It's, it's very, very <laughs> easy to do because the majority of your pee is urea and nitrogen. Mm-hmm. So you only have to detect for one of those two. If one is more abundant than the other naturally mm-hmm. in, in like a public water, you just wouldn't do that one. Urea, obviously... Shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Nitrogen might be. Nitrogen's in the air, so mm-hmm. that you could have false positive just from right. the air, I guess. Um, but yeah, I I was actually thinking about this yesterday because, and I was trying to figure out a way to make a joke about it. Uh, Cletus McFarlane was showing off his uh, air strip house, custom house that he's having built, his airfield that he owns. Okay. And the pool that they are having built is the bow tie, the Chevy emblem. It's called bow tie. And they're going to have like the, the two, the top. So you have the, the bow tie going across, right? And you have the two top and bottom, like stems, if you will. Um, they're going to have those be that like gradual sloped entry. Cause they have two really small kids. And all I was thinking, as soon as he said that was, how could I make the analogy of adults going into that area and just kind of doing like the sitting in the water, but not really getting in the pool is the same as a dog squatting. Cause that, that you know what they're doing. They're getting in the pool to pee. Not, not all the time. No, 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 not all the time. Okay. Sure. It, no, you, but sunbathing. No, no. You know, for a fact that they are when they go and they get in there and then, they're not with anybody else, and then they get up moments later. Oh, uh, okay. No, no, no. I'm I'm talking about the person who's not wanting to get fully soaked, just wanting to cool off a little bit, but still sunbathe. Like, per for example, I'm thinking of my friend's um, pool, and it's it's like that. And we would lay in the water that was about yay much because it was like a hundred degrees out, but you were staying cool from. Yay much water. Okay, but adults at a public pool that are going and sitting in there are taking a piss. God. That never even crossed my mind. Yeah. <laughs> never crossed my mind. Um, and speaking of pools and swimming, were you also told you can't swim 30 minutes after eating? Or until, sorry, until 30 minutes after eating? 20 something I would be at like public pools and see signs of if you eat, you have to stay out for 30 minutes. You don't remember seeing any signs like that or no. Interesting. I never went to public pools as a kid. Right. Cause he grew up with a pool because yeah. we had completely different childhoods. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this first I asked him for, like 10 more of the funniest ones. This first one doesn't even make sense. The remote control needs batteries from the fridge to work. What? Yeah, I don't. Maybe that's to delay. It says. You have to put the fridge in or put the batteries into the fridge. It says it's a tactic to prevent down. endless channel surfing, especially when those batteries are mysteriously always missing. If you're telling them where they are, they're not missing. Hmm. Uh, the playground Playground closes at night because the swings turn into monsters. <laughs> uh, we always went to my elementary school because mm-hmm. it was connected to our neighborhood. It was like half a mile away, so you right. could walk there, bike there. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, they had a, there's like a, there's a drop off cul de sac back there that's connected to the neighborhood. And then there was also the like the main road that was in front of the school. Mm-hmm. And along that, there's a there's a gate so they could close it to cars whenever they needed to. But it had one of those like turnstile type gates on the sidewalk, mm-hmm. so you could still walk in gotcha. if you were there. But that only prevents cars from coming in from the neighborhood. Right. The main entrance was always open because <laughs> that's where that entrance came in to like the staff parking right there, but it was connected to part of the high school parking Mm -hmm. lot. You also had a service building for like transportation. And then the admin building for the school district was at the front. And then there's also all the sports complexes. So there's no, there was no 
access control coming from the front. Mm -hmm. So you could just drive your car and park right in front of the school or in the parking lot. Right. But you just couldn't drive into the back. Okay. Whatever. But we used to go that way. We used to go through there. There were three different playgrounds. Plus you had like soccer fields and football fields and softball fields. Mm -hmm. All the practice fields and stuff like that from the high school were kind of over there. Tennis courts, which this is all, it was all publicly open when school was out. Gotcha. So after hours or when there's no practice during the summer, whatever. Um, but then you could cut through and then there were three gas stations on the corner right there. Conveniently, none of them were on the school side. Okay. There were the other three corners. So we would go cross the road, go to Subway or get snacks and drinks and whatever during the summertime. Okay. And then hang out at the playground, play basketball, do whatever else. I remember one of my, one of the kids was like two or three years older than me. Um, went out there one year with a Molotov cocktail. I'm not going to say the last word, but. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. We used to do, there's a, a church as well. That's like, that was in part of the neighborhood. We drove past it when you were up there mm -hmm. and they're, they have a small strip of actual parking lot, but mm -hmm. then they have a big field on the side, which is their actual like church parking lot. Mm -hmm. And that field, we would go to play football and whatever else all the time. Okay. Are you like taking a call or something? No, oh. I was just going to share the very last one. Okay. I was, I was going to read a couple more. Of this, okay, go, go for it. No, no, no. Go for it. This is the very last one. Um. They're like, it's, some of these are written as if they're saying it on behalf of me, as if it's supposed to be my voice. So it's, they ate your, or the dog ate your homework. Shouldn't it be the dog ate my homework? Mm -hmm. um, your toys go to sleep when you do. Because they were awake and I alive? I guess. Question mark? <laughs> Uh, it says a comforting thought for children, adding a touch of magic to their bedtime routine. Like you need to get good rest. So your toys get good rest and are available for you to play with tomorrow. Okay. I guess. I don't know. Um, if you keep picking your nose, your finger will get stuck. Oh yeah. I've heard that one. Ours was, uh, something more along the lines of like, you're going to push the booger up into your brain and kill yourself or something. Yeah. I've. I don't know about push the booger up, but I've heard if you're digging that far up, you're going to touch your brain or something. Yeah. Uh, the internet shuts off at bedtime, a modern day twist on limiting screen time, <laughs> which ours does mm -hmm. for them, not for me, not for her, but for them it does. Uh, the clouds are made of cotton candy. Cute. But why? Imagine. What is that? Hold on, hold on. What is that gif? From the Ryan Reynolds wearing scrubs, pulling the mask to the side and saying, but why? What is that from? I have no idea what you're talking about. I use the gif all the time and I don't know where it's from. I have no from. idea what you're talking about. He's like, he's pulled the mask to the side. He's like, but why? I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. So I don't, I can't. I, I need to find that out. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. Uh, the vacuum cleaner is a monster that eats dust bunnies. Cute. And then your pet fish went on vacation. Oh, <laughs> poor fishy, fishy. Uh, these funny lies, while harmless, often create lasting memories, um, bring smiles to faces years lasting later. Lasting memories. They highlight the playful side of parenting and contribute to a colorful tapestry of childhood experiences. Hmm. Yeah, that's one way of... Lie to your kids because mm -hmm. they'll remember it's it colorful. fondly. They'll remember it fondly. Mm. All right. So last one. Okay. Travis Kelsey's brother, Jason Kelsey, who just retired from the Eagles. Okay. Um, he apparently has been telling his kids that cats are poisonous so that they don't get one. But as we talked about a couple episodes ago, Taylor Swift has several cats. And so there's this thing going around. That's a good of, excuse to not have to hang out with Taylor. <laughs> what's going to happen when his kids that, 
meet her cat. That adds more lore and backstory to the Buffalo Wild Wings commercial. What? What are you talking about? He's in a Buffalo Wild Wings commercial. And he's talking to the buffalo and he's like, he says something along the lines of, you like this flavor. I like this flavor. Something else. And he's like, I guess that makes us best friends. And he's like, no. It's like my brother or something along those lines. He's like, but does your brother have time to hang out with you? He's like, well, I guess not. He's like, see, we're best friends. <laughs> what? <laughs> what a random commercial. <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> so yeah, now we know why. His brother doesn't have time. His brother doesn't have time for him. That's what he tells other people. But it's really because he doesn't want people to know that he's lying to his kids about Taylor Swift's cats. Yeah. <laughs> See? So random and funny. The backstory to the Buffalo like, I'm that's, that's the story I'm sticking with now, too. That's, that's exactly why the commercial <laughs> exists. Cats are poisonous, guys. <laughs> cats are poisonous. So Jason Kelsey is now best friends with the Buffalo <laughs> from Buffalo Wild Wings. So random. Those two things are now linked forever. <laughs> Was that your last thing? Yep, that was it. Hmm. He was in another commercial. He's been, that's, I think he's going to be a commentator now. Too, I thought that's what you told me. I don't know. I know Tom Brady's working for Fox now. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's working for something too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I did see a meme where it was making fun of, oh, I've seen a bunch of them. There was, they were like dancing together and people were not dancing. They were, they were at some event. And she's like doing this, and he's just kind of standing there. Like, Are you talking about Travis Kelsey and Taylor yeah, Swift? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we were we were talking about the brother. I know. So when you say he, yeah. I need to figure out which he. Okay. So the same clothing that he's wearing in that clip, which is extremely goofy looking. First of all, there's a still image of him where he's like looking like he's confused, and <laughs> it says. The bread goes into the toaster and the toast comes out. Where'd the bread go? <laughs> he just he looks like he's confused. Like, but where did it go? Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure that he's actually that smart. So I don't know. You don't think he's smart enough to be confused, or that he? Or that the meme is true. Yeah, I'm worried that the no. meme would actually be true. <laughs> well, he did go to college in Ohio. So. Mm. Poor guy. Yeah. And everybody knows Ohio doesn't exist. That means the education doesn't exist. <laughs> right? Ah, oh, the math isn't mathing. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow. All of the things. Click links. Click links. Yep. And that's it. And that's it. Bye. Bye. Wait. Tell us the lies your parents told you. Bye. Yes. <laughs>